Two girls rolled their eyes at me at a restaurant while I was only trying to be nice. Fine, keep waiting then. <laughs> I was having lunch at this restaurant last Sunday with a friend. All the other tables were occupied and two girls appeared. But since, uh, yeah, two girls appeared. But since it was packed and there were no empty tables nor vacant seating, they stood there awkwardly looking around waiting for some people to get up and to leave. I told them that we were almost finished so they could have our table after we left. But instead of them, be, uh, damn, instead of them being thankful, they just threw me a dirty look and rolled their eyes as if I was trying to flirt with them. A lot of you bitches fuck yourselves up thinking every man that want to talk to you is trying to push up on you. Sometimes if you're in a situation where you're looking for something and it's obviously that you're looking for something, people fucking notice that you're looking for something. I'm sorry, bitch, but who convinced you you were the one in the room that we wanted to talk to? That's how I feel. Like, I walk into the room. Like, I demand everybody's attention when I walk into a room. I walk into the room as if I am the one y'all are looking for. But I don't expect everybody to be looking for me. You know, <laughs> like, I'm not going to expect that. Like, now you bitches going to be standing here all day. <laughs> they rolled their eyes as if I was trying to flirt with them. My face went red and I didn't know what to say. I was just trying to be nice. It wasn't as if I was trying to in initiate small talk with them or anything. Then my embarrassment turned to anger. The least they could do is just nod their heads. Then I heard one of them say to other people, damn, say to others, maybe they should go to a different restaurant. Her friend said no, because this is the only Chinese restaurant in the vicinity of their place. Also because that guy, she pointed at me in a not so subtle way, was almost done. Fine. Fine then. I raised my hand. Okie dokie. Fine, fine. I raised my hand and called one of the waiters and told her that we would like to have more drinks. She brought them out a few minutes later. My friend was trying so hard to stifle his laughter. I swear he broke a rib or two while we very slowly ate the rest of our meal. Eventually, the, ru the rude girls left quickly. I fucking love it. I love it. Like I said, a lot of you bitches... <laughs> just assume that somebody wanted you didn't even listen to what bruh said that's like those people where you drop something and the guys be like hey you drop oh i'm sorry i have a boyfriend bitch i'm keeping all the money that fell out of your back pocket i'm keeping it okay well you better tell your boyfriend to reimburse you for all the cash you just lost <laughs> like you better tell your boyfriend you better hope he's got a job because the money that i just tried to give you is now mine like y'all came into a restaurant that's fully packed, fully packed of people. Someone seen you waiting and said, if you're willing to wait a couple seconds, we'll be done in, in just a few minutes. Instead of you saying, oh, OK, instead of you being like, instead of you just nodding your head, you chose to shoot a dirty look and roll your eyes. I would have ordered everything on the fucking menu. I would have asked for a bowl of rice and ate it grain by fucking grain. And then when y'all left, would have left so quickly, y'all would have seen me as you was leaving. Because what the fuck? Bitch. All right. Now I, now I have to sit here until we both die. That's like people who honk at you before the light fucking turn. I will. Now we got to sit here until we both die. I hope you didn't have nothing to do today. I hope you didn't have anything to do today. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she should tell me what her and my daughter are going to be doing since I'm her mother? No. Because if you're not going to tell me where you taking my baby, you can't take my baby. Like that. That's really how it goes. <laughs> if you're not going to tell me where you taking my baby, she can't go. And I'm not about to let you make me the asshole. Make me the asshole. All right. I, 38 female, have a 13 year old, Kimberly. My sister Angela li has lived with us since my family. Damn. My sister Angela lives with us since my family lives with my parents. Angela is 25 and she's more of the fun aunt. I hear because she lets Kimberly do whatever she wants. Now, as a mother, I don't want my child wearing makeup until she's 15. Because one, she's going to ruin her skin since her body isn't even developed yet. 
Two, I don't think makeup is good for young girls because if you wear makeup, you're going to look older than what your actual age is. And they should just live their childhood and try not to grow up too fast. I agree. Well, thank you kindly, Puddin' Pump. I agree very much so. Baby, be a child for as long as you possibly can, dear. Be a child for as long. Growing up is not going there. It's going there. It's not going nowhere. Time is the one thing that we cannot escape no matter how much we want to. It's You're still going to grow up, baby. <laughs> like just enjoy your life as it is right now. Just, I truly believe, yeah. My baby wore knocker balls, beads. Yeah, my guy baby wore all the little girl hairstyles as long as I could possibly make that shit happen. She had to tell me herself. I don't like the knocker balls no more. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, are we still cool with the beads? Yes. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. My baby had beads for every occasion. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, 4th of July, St. Patrick's Day, Pride. My baby had beads for everything. I beaded her the fuck up until she was she was over the beads. <laughs> So my baby go be a little girl for as long as I can. For as long as I can make her little. You want Barbies? Okay. This year, my baby said, I want jewelry and mascara. <laughs> you sure? You don't, you don't want an easy bake? <sighs> they got different Barbies now. nope i just need a minute it's okay like my heart was broken my heart was broken i said baby what you want she said i want jewelry i want to watch you don't want to play barbies with me no more you know you don't want a baby doll she didn't want none of that shit she did no, no. okay and damn let's kimberly wear whatever makeup she wants which i don't like because i feel as the actual mother she should talk to me about it first now kimberly has not talked to me about wanting to wear any type of cosmetic shit and if she had i would explain my reasoning and if she really wants to wear it i'll get it myself but recently angela has been taking kimberly to get her nails done and go shopping for inappropriate clothing like crop tops and stuff oh absolutely not I've had a talk with her and I told her to tell me where they're going whenever they hang out because all the time they just say they're going to hang out and they don't give any details. She told me that I need to loosen up a little and tell me and telling me that being a being a strict parent isn't going to protect her. My husband said that what I told her was a little asshole like. I don't know if I'm being an asshole. No, because you're taking my daughter and you're dressing her like a harlot when she's 13. My you, my daughter is wearing fucking makeup. You're taking my 13-year-old to go and get acrylic nails without asking me how I feel about it. No. Come in the house with your motherfucking belly button showing. I'ma cut it off. Put your motherfucking clothes on. You need to go find the bottom of that shirt. And if you can't, don't put it on again. Okay? When it comes to you wanting to wear stuff like that, you will come and talk to me. You will talk to me. I will cut off whatever fucking part of your body that you want to expose when you're 13. Your back, too much of your fucking shoulder, cut it off. Don't worry about how I'm going to do it. Just know that they are in danger of being removed <laughs> just if you don't want to lose it you'll cover it up because no there's a whole lot of issues with these girls these 13 14 year old girls looking 18 19 years old and then when something happens to them the parents want to scream and cry oh my gosh i can't believe something happened to my baby well when your child looks older than me what the fuck do you expect they are out here in an area, in situations that they have no idea about, in places they should never have fucking been. Never have fucking been because they are dressing and they're wearing makeup and they're acting way too old for, th for their age. Hell no. So when a parent actually tries to parent and tries to stop that shit, she's told that she's wrong. Excuse me, that she's wrong. I really burnt. <laughs> she's wrong and she's overreacting. No. Hell no. A lot of these motherfucking kids aren't allowed to be kids anymore because parents are trying, they dress them like they're dolls. 
dress them like they're babies. Like, oh my gosh, you see a baby wearing a fucking crop top for why? She ain't hot. She's not hot. Why she need to have on a crop top? <laughs> like, no, these are the, these are parents that do shit like this. And this parent is actually trying to stop this because someone who is not responsible, who is not this child parent is, is allowing, is dressing her up like a fucking doll. She's 13 years old. You took my 13 year old to get her fucking nails done. I would be the most hated person in the house because what we're going to do is go upstairs and soak that shit off. Hell no, because I... I have always done what I wanted to do, but I can promise you what the fuck I never wanted to do was some shit I knew my mama was going to box me upside the head for without asking her. That shit never crossed my mind. If I wanted to get my nails done, I'm going to ask my mama. <laughs> if I wanted to wear makeup, I'm going to ask my mother. Like, nah, mm -mm -mm. I always did what I wanted to do, but I never wanted to do some shit I know that I needed to ask permission for. Like, and it's not even that the auntie's crossing the line. This girl is 13 fucking years old. She knows better. She knows exactly what, how her mom feels about this shit. She does. Because there's a reason why she's allowing the fun on. She's going with the fun on for these things to happen. Because my mom would never let me buy anything like this. She fucking knows. She is, she will be held accountable the same as the fucking sister. Because you're too old. Well, my aunt bought them for me. And... Since when have those pretty fingers that you got nails on stop knowing how to text? You could have texted me and told me, mom, auntie so-and-so is taking me to the nail salon. Can I get my nails done? But because you don't want to ask and you assume that you have the right to do all of this, you will be punished as well. You will be. Because I don't know who the fuck you thought you, you were dealing with, but I'm the mother here. I am your mother. That means when there's certain things that's going down, you will ask me permission first. You will ask permission first. Like, no. Hell no. Nah. I never. I will never understand somebody. My kids don't. I wish a fucking kid would tell me no. Because I'm not doing anything. I would never ask you to do something that's going to hurt you or harm you in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> you know, like, there's no reason... That, you know, I would never do anything that would harm you or make you feel threatened. So if I ask you to do something and you want to tell me no, you're going to start losing fucking privileges real fast. Real fast. She can't just wear kid makeup. No, she cannot. She's 13. She's going to be a little girl until she's grown enough to buy her own makeup. Then she can wear whatever the fuck she wants. But she can't just wear makeup. It doesn't matter what type of makeup. My mom did not allow me to wear any kind of makeup when I was little. Not the kid shit, not the fake lipstick, none of that shit. Because why? What are you practicing for? You don't need to practice for that shit right now. You don't need to do that. There is no, I truly don't feel like there's a such thing as kid makeup. Like, like there's no, because makeup is makeup. Lipstick is fucking lipstick. <laughs> like, there's no such thing as kid makeup. Like, you know, like, no, no. Hell no. You no. If I say you can't wear no fucking makeup, you can't wear no makeup. If, if I, you know, like that's it and that's all. No, hell no. Mm -mm. Hell no. I didn't start wearing makeup until I was 27. I think I went to the store and got my first. Hi, Michaela, you're here. Got my first little, um, like fucking liquid bottle and shit and honestly i think i've only bought two since then <laughs> you know like i don't i just don't wear makeup honestly <clears throat> like I, I i truly feel like you know we wear makeup for us i don't wear makeup for you i wear makeup because it makes me feel better it makes me feel good about myself there's certain insecurities about myself that i don't like that you know i want to cover up that make me feel better when they're covered up 100 percent get that i like didn't like the fact that i was hiding the things that i was insecure about with makeup instead of embracing the insecurity you know said that i'm being cruel for still expecting her to pay half of the rent well bitch were you living in half of the house were you living in half of the house that's my question I've been with my partner for nearly three years and we've lived together for two years. 
I have no family or friends in the town that I currently live in, whereas my parent, my parents, my partner has her parents and a lot of friends here. We moved into a new apartment four months ago and signed a one year lease because we loved the apartment and the landlord prefers long term tenants so they wouldn't do a six month lease. The lease is in both of our names and the landlord has both of our bank details. For rent, we both send half each. I've noticed that we are seeming more like friends than an actual couple. So I tried sitting down with my partner to talk through my concerns. She just brushed them off and said we were fine. I tried talking to her again a couple of weeks later, but she again dismissed my concerns. After the third time of trying to talk to her and getting dismissed, I told her I didn't think we were working. She asked what brought this on and I told her I've been trying to talk to her about my concerns and she refuses to listen to me. Um, yeah, she just repeated that's because everything was fine. Bitch, it ain't fine if I'm trying to break up with you. I just told her that it wasn't and that's what I've been trying to talk to her about. I mentioned that since we were both still on the lease for another eight months and neither of us can afford to break the lease... The charge is four months of rent. I, I told her that I would stay on the couch. She said no and that she would move out. I said, okay, fair enough. She said that I would be paying all of the rent. I told her that she's still on the lease, so the landlord is still going to expect her to send half of it each month. And that just because she moves out doesn't mean she's not liable. She said she won't be paying, so I told her that I would advise, <laughs> I would advertise for a roommate, but until then, I'm expecting her to pay her half. She said no and that she shouldn't have to pay for an apartment she isn't living in. I just mentioned that moving out doesn't take her off the lease. She just said I was being cruel and unreasonable by forcing her to pay rent. How would you handle this? <laughs> Tell her that we need to come up with the money to break the lease. That is it. Just because you move out does not mean you are 100% not liable anymore. Then, okay, if you do not want to continue to pay rent here for the next eight months or until I find a roommate, you need to come up with half and I'll come up with half for us to break the lease. It's not a tough one. Just because you're moving out does not mean you are out of the contract you signed. It's not a tough one. It's not. She signed a 12 month contract to pay her bills just because the person that you signed the contract with is no longer in a relationship with you does not make the contract null and void. This is still a standing contract that you agreed to. It's not a tough one at all. It's only tough because you're thinking with your emotions about how they just broke up and she should be able to separate from him. I agree 100 percent. But. She still entered into a contract that she is reliable for or responsible for. Like, nah, baby. Nah, baby. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, for real. The landlord gonna take her ass to court and all he got to do is show the lease statement that she agreed to pay 12 months of fucking rent. We, he wins. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh I think girlfriend was going to live with whoever she was cheating on him with. I do. <laughs> this one is Petty Revenge. The title is She Earned Her Tip. I know I'm probably going to get hate for this, and that's okay. I was pretty ticked off about how this waitress treated me and my friend. It's extremely rare for me to tip below 20%. Today, I took my best friend out to a birthday, damn, for a birthday dinner at a nice restaurant in our nearest city. This is a sit down restaurant. I would say that it's pretty nice. The drinks average $15 to $25. The entrees are about $30 average for reference. Our waitress ignored us and checked on the table next to us three times while I was actively waving her down. We got our drinks in 10 minutes, but it took 45 minutes until we got any of our food. I had to flag down another waiter to ask about our food. Within five minutes, the food was magically ready all at once, appetizers and the entrees. I had to flag down a manager for water. And to be honest, I was so annoyed because the waitress waited very attentively on the other tables. When we finally got our check, I put this on the open space of our receipt for a 90, a $90 meal. L equals one, A equals two, Z equals three, 
y equals four equals ten dollars i tipped her ten dollars that's the tip she earned for being such an ass in my opinion i agree like i am i'm one of those people that 100 percent does not agree with tipping culture i don't i don't i'm not i'm one of those people that doesn't agree with people who feel like you're obligated to tip because they brought you your food if your service and your attitude is bad you get nothing from me if you know that you need your tips in order to break even and make money to pay your bills then you better fucking act like it if you know you need your your tips to break even fucking act like it that's how i feel because then everybody want to jump in the conversation oh my gosh like they could be having a bad day they should have left that shit at the door i don't fucking care about that because if you came into my job and i was having a bad day and i snapped at everybody y'all wouldn't use that same excuse for me y'all would call corporate and demand i lost my job i don't give a fuck they only get paid three dollars an hour i don't fucking care then you need to act like your bills depend on the twelve dollars and 75 cents that i'm gonna tip you if you only get paid for three dollars an hour you need to act like you need this money i'm not saying you have to kiss the ground that i walk on but i need you to remember i have something you want do your fucking job and we won't have no issues okay my husband's attachment to me is suffocating it's funny my husband of eight years drives hundreds of miles for work every week because i work from home he calls me every time he gets in the car and expects me to stay on the phone and keep him company for his hours long drive this has been going on for years now it's absolutely fucking maddening when i don't have anything left to talk about after our fifth hour on the phone He'll tell me that I'm boring and start complaining that we're just another couple who have nothing to talk about. Bitch, we spend 500 hours on the phone a week. There is nothing to talk about. That's hilarious. Oh, I love her. She said, no, motherfucker. Most couples don't talk for dozens of hours on the phone every week. Most of the time, there is an eight to 10 hour gap every day for stories and topics to accumulate. But I have no material left inside my head. Everything I've seen and felt, I've already talked to you about. What else do you fucking want from me? I'm running on brain fumes. <laughs> I've started faking work phone calls just to get off the phone. And sometimes I choose to work in the office because he won't call me while I'm there. He knows the second that I get off work. And as soon as I get in the car to go home, he'll call me. I'm, stop, I'm not going to answer. I can't even decompress in the fucking car before coming home to see him. I wish that I felt special. I, I wish I felt special because my husband wants to talk to me incessantly. But I'm not. I'm aggravated. I'm sometimes, damn, I sometimes want to listen to music or a podcast or even watch a show on TV, but I can't because I'm on the phone with him. I get overstimulated because the kids also want to talk to me. I feel like I have way too many pots on the stove and my attention is being pulled in too many directions. Work, kids, spouse, spouse, instant messages, emails, the cats having the zoomies. It all just gets to me after a while. But does he understand? Nope. He just gets butt hurt that he has to drive alone. What type of fucking man, child? I don't want to be around someone that uh, you guys, baby and I have been together almost three years. I can say collectively, baby and I have probably spent three hours on our phone, on the phone since the beginning of our relationship in three years, two and a half years. We've spent about three hours on the phone. We don't talk. Now, our text message thread goes on forever. Forever. <laughs> on forever. But I'm not going to sit on the phone with you. I'm not going to sit. Sir, you're driving. I promise you, nothing that you did today was that fucking interesting that you can't wait until you get home to tell me. Like, no, baby lived an hour away from me when we first got together. Like, when baby and I first met, we didn't talk on the phone before we went on our first date. I was 100% ready to become a statistic. 
100% ready to end up a victim because we didn't talk on the phone. He reached out and he was like, you're cute. And I was like, you too. He was like, you want to go out? I was like, yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Like, bro, this man has nothing. Like, nothing is that fucking interesting for you to want to talk to me on the phone for two, three hours before you get home to look me in my face for the next couple of days before you leave again. No, 